you cannot give up there is only one rule for successful people i think they don't give up i think all the players has to learn that result is one thing your effort is one thing you cannot control your result effort it's in your hand effort you can control you can put 100% Hello and welcome to Vikram's Incredible 1000, the success podcast. On this, we look to interview the best of the best and really understand how do they get extraordinary results so that we can repeat them in our own lives. Today, we have with us an international table tennis player. He's an Arjuna awardee. He's a two-time Olympian. Not one, not two, but two-time Olympian. And he's also known as the Bengal Tiger of Table Tennis. Because when he screams, <laughs> everyone can hear him. It's my privilege and honor to introduce today, Somijit Ghosh. Bro, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vikram. Thanks for the nice uh, introduction. I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, it's really nice. So, bro, I want to know from you. You have been playing table tennis for almost so many years of your life now. And you've achieved so much, which is so commendable. I want to know from you, what drives you to be extraordinary and incredible? You know, the people often talk about success, about confidence, about things that make it possible to achieve a lot. And clearly you have done a lot. So I wanted to know, how, how, how would you define success? And how would one go about becoming successful? What, was the, what, what are the factors necessary for success according to you? I think for success, I think if you if you sp uh, speak to any various uh, you, any, any various sector or segment or somewhere any business any businessman politician sports person I think few things are similar for successful people. One is discipline, time management. One is uh, you can say like believe in yourself, mm -hmm. confident, and I think your commitment. And then, of course, the passion has come along with commitment. And so, I think these few things are very common in, if you are successful or if you want to achieve something in your life. So, these few things you have to have. Wherever you go, which, uh, whichever segment, wherever you go, you have to carry those things, I think. Mm -hmm. So, in, as a sports person, the first thing is like uh, discipline, I, I believe. Like you have a daily routine which you have to follow. There is no alternative thing. I mean, uh, success, you cannot, you know, you cannot uh, do some, uh, you cannot skip something. <clears throat> you just have to follow and follow. So uh, it's, uh, in the beginning, it was quite boring, but it was, of course, quite fun also. But I had a very difficult schedule also when I was, 15 i went to sweden i had to stay alone and which was not that easy so <clears throat> i had quite difficult <clears throat> routine also but uh, it was very much uh, uh, i mean energetic and also it was very in, and i i had enjoyed a lot that, that that you know that journey and i used to enjoy a lot of like discipline routine like wake up like seven o'clock or Wherever you are depends uh, because if you are in India, you have to wake up early and you have to finish your day early because it's quite hot in India. But if you are in Europe, you, 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 you can wake up a little late and then you have a whole day to spend. So, uh, so it it's depends where you are. But uh, this journey is really interesting and I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I would say if you have something boring work, after that you will get... Uh, 100 percent successful 100 mm -hmm. percent you will get uh, success and there is no shortcut in success i believe that you cannot uh, do anything sh uh, anything like for short short term 
you have mm -hmm. to you have to have big plan you have to have like longer term plan and then you have to work for that and then i think you can achieve something you can win something so for me success is if you say one word i think discipline for success yeah passion for success uh, and then you uh, believe for success that you can achieve something which is very important and especially when someone is not believing on yourself but you have to still believe on yourself so you can go on go on every day so and one more thing you cannot give up there is only one rule for successful people i think they don't give up i think i had also a lot of problem and many things i i i think everyone had that issue i mean some some issue maybe but yeah if you don't give up then you can easily achieve this i think the only thing is you cannot give up mhm mm i think uh, one quality definitely that you have that i have seen over many years is that you really have a strong fighting spirit and you really you really give it 100% every time you step onto the table so it's just amazing to hear you know all of these little things it's it's the small things and these boring things that you do on a regular basis that ends up making you the success that you are and i think a lot of people whenever they're looking at their bigger goals they're looking at their dreams they often hope or oh, maybe one day i might get there i hope to reach that point some day but you know just like you have shared it's it's all about doing those th those boring things those little things maybe waking up in the morning at the right time and then doing that every single day training every single day and then getting that right and that's what leads to extraordinary results so great stuff yeah so exactly you were right yeah so i want to know now we all had role models growing up and uh, i want to know who are the role models that you had when you were small and how did they inspire you was there anything that made you want to be like them yeah actually my role model is subhajit saha actually i'm from siliguri and few years i was there also till i was uh, 13 14 uh, then i moved to europe <clears throat> at the age of 15 but till then i was in siliguri with my mm -hmm. parents so in uh, from siliguri there is few few players who won national championship who got arjun award also so subhajit saha was my role model because he has been playing really nice and he was very much dedicated towards table tennis he he is a like i think i perfect i idol for the game he is mm -hmm. genuinely a great player and also tremendous great uh, ambassador for the game mm -hmm. so i used to follow him i used to like him a lot because whenever i i got the chance to Uh, play around him and uh, when i went to national camp and then I, i i used to meet him i used to play with him because he was like my senior so like i remember when when, when i got uh, got an opportunity to, to play play with the senior players in 2008 i went to patiala and then pune for the national camp go around the senior players so i used to stay with him and spoke with him a lot yeah along uh, uh, with subhajit sah there was somadeep roy and sharat kamal those big name i, I wanted to uh, you know share uh, my thoughts with them and whatever experience they had i wanted to learn from them so they used to help me a lot and subhajit sah also helped me and somadeep roy also helped me a lot and sharat kamal also still they are helping me a lot so mm -hmm. subhajit sah is like my idol because i have been uh, grow i have grown up by uh, you know watching him and uh, i uh, i saw him very closely and i was initially I, i i was playing in the same club with him so i was there so i knew i knew him and i i was following his result everything so he was like my idol and uh, so i didn't change anything and after i became good player after i went to abroad then i like a lot jano wonder mm -hmm. and he has tremendous uh, idea of the game and he he is a legend i mean everyone knows him he won world championship twice uh, uh, olympic gold medalist so he is a like god of table tennis 
But yeah, if I come to Subhajit sir, he is very much uh, determination. He has very high determination, very much passionate about the sport, very much discipline. Like I heard many stories. Like if somebody is there in the room, like ten o'clock means ten o'clock. He used to switch off the light and then sleep. So I saw him also many times in the national national uh, camps. Like I I was there like. Uh, 2011 or 12 in Patiala, sharing room with him. So I knew how disciplined he was. Like uh, if it's 11, then it's 11. 10 means 10. There is, uh, there is no changing or something. I mean, he's, he's very particular with every you know thing. So yeah, for me he's much more disciplined, and I wanted to be like that. Like he's much more disciplined and passionate about the sport. I mean. Not, I would say not so much talented, but very much hardworking. So mm-hmm. I wanted to learn that hard work from him. So I wanted to follow him for that. Mm. It's really interesting for me because uh, when I look at what all you have shared, these are all people who are around you. These were people who are available to you. You could actually go and talk to them. Whenever people have role models, they usually think of international players. And they they look at people who are usually not a part of their life. But you had the rare opportunity to be around your role models, to talk to them, learn from them, understand from them. How do they get to where they are? So I think um, for everyone who is listening, it's very important for them to understand that even if you can't reach, you can't interact with the world champion. (laughs) If you can't do that, I think the best you can do is at least see who is the best person around you, learn from them and then take it forward from there. And one more interesting thing I want to mention here is that uh, you also ended up uh, beating uh, all of these people. (laughs) So (laughs) each and every one of these people that you mentioned... You have beaten them on the table. So whether they were India champion at the time, whether they were world champion, you know, you've beaten all of them. So what is that feeling like? You know, I I asked Satyan the same question, you know, being the uh, India number one right now. I asked him, what's that feeling like to be competing on the table with your idols and on the world stage? So I wanted to know from you, what is it like when you're playing against these guys? How do you stop looking at them as idols and look at them as opponents. What is that thought process, that mindset that you have to develop in such a situation? It was not that easy in the beginning. But when you grow up, you will learn that whatever hard work you are doing, you are doing for yourself. And I had to win against them. Because if I need to find a place in the team, then I have to beat them. I have to win against them. Then only... I. I can find a place in the team, in the national side. And my father used to say one word that which I cannot forget. That whenever you play on court, if I am playing against you, still you have to win that match. You cannot uh, let me win any, any free point or you cannot let me win a game. Because you have to win. So my father used to say from beginning when I started, I was young, like, this this word I cannot forget ever. Like he used to say, if you are playing against me, still you have to win. So you learn this. So that helped me a lot. That this kind of words, you know. So when I played against them, yeah, they were my idol. I give them huge respect, of course, but not on table. On table, they are my opponent. They are my. I have to win. I am playing for myself. So. This is a basically individual game. Table tennis is an individual game. So there is no team or something. Of course, there is a team, but still you are playing alone. If you are winning, then you are helping your team. But still you have to play like single. When I, when I played against them, yeah, they were my idol. They were my senior. But uh, but I had to be to find my, find my place in the national side. So I, I had a very difficult match also. I wanted to share with you. When I went to first time Olympic qualification, 2012 London, uh, our coach uh, called for one uh, called for one uh, this uh, pre-Olympic qualification uh, match between me and Subhajit Saha in the national camp for uh, best of seven sets for uh, best of three matches. You will play best of three matches uh, each day one match. 
So first match I won four one, and then second match uh, if I uh, win then one one then again I will play one more one more match. But second match also I won like four two I. Mm -hmm. So that was not that easy. I mean, very very difficult because I was sharing room with him also, and then I had to play <laughs> with him. Uh, it was very, I mean, a difficult situation. I had to, I had to say, but yeah, somehow it went well for me, and I was also young, and I had, I was underdog. I had uh, nothing to lose basically, so I won. But I got an opportunity to play against Warner also. My, I mean, also another. Inspiration. I played him in Swedish league. Also, he was uh, he was just he wanted to you know just he was just closing his <laughs> career something like that. He was forty six something like that, and I was uh, nineteen or twenty at that time. And I pl I played him actually three times I think two times or three times, I don't remember because I played in Sweden five season and he was all the time he was there. So I played him I think three times and. Uh, all all the time I won basically, I and mean, he had a lot of problem with me. But yeah, <laughs> but when you play with that with this kind of champions, you know, you feel that they want to win and they they will do everything to win. I think this is the key thing that we all have to learn from the champions that they are giving their hundred percent and they are trying hundred percent. This is what I think all the players has to learn that result is one thing your effort is one thing you cannot control your result many times happened with me that i played really fantastic but opponent played better i had no other option but then you have to analyze honestly you have to think honestly yeah what was my mistake what you did what could be better you could do uh, but yeah, the effort, it's in your hand. Effort you can control. You can put 100%. You can prepare well. You can go for uh, really very strong, very hard. But yeah, result, I think, very difficult to control. Most of the time, you don't have any control over result. Result, it's like uh, uh, you can win, you can lose. But yeah, how you're playing, how you're putting your effort, it affects. It has a lot of impact, of course. But mm -hmm. I think uh, effort, it's in your hand. You have to try for your best. Mm -hmm. I think so this few occasion was not that easy for me to play. Also, when I won against Shar Sharad Bea first time, it was uh, very difficult also for me. I remember I was playing against him uh, when I won him first time. Uh, it was in Delhi. We were playing one office tournament, and uh, we uh, in my team, me and Sanil Shetty was playing from my office team BPCL, and third player was one uncle. I mean, uh, not not a table, professional table tennis player. So we knew that we'll lose our third match. So first match I played with Somadhi Roy, and Somadhi Roy was that time. Uh, that time uh, he has been always champion, but I had no chance that time, and th that was my first first time winning against him in Delhi. So <laughs> we we had a match against Indian Oil BPCL versus Indian Oil three o'clock. We came like two thirty me and Sanil, and we were like a little bit upset that you no know, they are really better. We don't have much uh, much chance. They are really strong because I never won against uh, 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 Somadhi Roy and Sharad Kamal. Sunny won against Somadhi Praya, but with Sharad Kamal, he never won also. So, I, we knew that we have no chance. I think we will lose. No problem. But, okay, we'll see. We'll give a chance. But we won. And I beat uh, Somadhi Praya first match. Then Sunny played fantastic with Sharad Bia. He lost, I think, 3-2, but very close. And then third match, uh, as usual, we, we had to lose because we, we, we didn't have any player. So we lost, but fourth match I won against Sharad Bay again. But it was very surprising. I just played and and everything was on on court. And he was missing and everything was so good. I won that fourth match. So it was two two, and then Sunil won against Somadhi Roy, and we won uh, we won uh, that uh, that uh, team match. So mm. that was a like 
accident you can say like nobody expect us to win that match but still we won so there is many win winning situation also losing situation will be there but uh, th- this is called result i think but the effort you have to put you have to try your best you don't know sometime miracle will happen and uh, and this is the thing basically because when you are playing if you have believe and if, if you have any negative thoughts or negative feelings going on it's between in yourself only because opponent doesn't know what is happening going through within you so when it's when it's your own feeling you have to when you have bad feeling like uh, but still you have to have good body language confident body language so you don't show show your uh, opponent that you are not weak you are not uh, feeling any negative negative things so you have to learn that you have to have very good body language so th- this is the thing that you have to learn and you will grow with with your experience with your time um in your career i think mhm yeah for me personally what i noted from what you just shared is one uh of course even if you are not confident at that point of time you should not show it to your opponent and also at the same yeah. time one of the main things that i saw was that you uh, just uh, you can confirm this uh, once i say it yeah. even though maybe before the match you did not have that self belief or that confidence that you were going to win against such a great player or such a top ranked player but still as the match went on as you started playing you were giving your 100% you were putting your eff- putting in the effort and i think you would have been giving your best effort throughout the match and even like you said when there were many matches when you might have been losing you would have still been giving your 100% but the result would have not come but i think on those days where you ended up getting close to winning or you ended up winning the match that self belief would have slowly started to increase and that is what allowed you to get more consistent results of winning am i right on this yes exactly exactly you're right you're right mm. like you have to show that you are confident and whatever negative you feeling you have inside you it's only with yourself you cannot show this to your opponent or someone else mm-hmm. people should see like you have a really good strong character when you are playing with your opponent like i would say satyan is really good for this mm-hmm. if you see him on court you will never see that yeah he is negative he is not feeling good he has uh, like uh, we used to say this like um, you have you should have a poker face you should have a poker face like nobody should see between you and your feeling it should be always similar strong and confident if you show to opponent that yeah i'm ready to fight here then yeah you are 50% you are winning you have mm. a chance to win but if you don't show that i am here to win then you are already losing mm. because until whenever I, i i had one very good experience i would like to share i played malong i played mm-hmm. malong uh, in 2013 mm-hmm. in 2013 i played uh, with malong world championship first round and malong was like second seed in the world in in that world championship he was world number 2 at that time so when i went to play against him and before that i w- i would like to uh, share one uh, funny story with you mm. the night before when draw came out uh, i was searching for my name because it's like 128 draw 128 names so yeah, yeah. so i was searching for my name there was four page draw i was first page i was not there because i had qualified second page i was not there third page i was not there then i called sharad bhai sharad bhai my name is not there what happened i won my all the matches but still i am not there in the main draw but then sharad bhai said okay let me see your name so he checked then he called me called me back so he said hey if you are winning your first round na you will win all uh, you will you will win the tournament <laughs> 
how is this possible? <laughs> then he said, your first sound is against Malong. <laughs> so I said, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. First time Malong. I was in best shape at that time. Mm-hmm. In that period, I won against Sharad Bhai also two, three months back. I was playing really good in the international circuit. So, in that period, I was playing really good. So, okay, first round, I went to play Malong and the crowd, so many people were there. And for Malong, the interesting thing is for Malong, there's the first tournament, uh, first match, sorry. In the tournament, that was the first match. But for me, I played on already four matches in the qualification. Mm-hmm. So, I was quite much more uh, set into the tournament than Malong. Mm. But Malong has much more quality than me. I mean, there is no comparison or something. So, first set, it was 9-9. Nine, nine, quite close. So, I thought I have a good chance to win. I mean, but as usual, he was serving and attacking. No chance. And then fourth set also, I was down 3-0. Fourth set also, I had 9-9. Nine, nine. But then no chance. He was very strong. Okay. Then I lost to him. And I, I, I was not that upset or nothing to lose for me. He was much much better player than, than me. So I played him again after one month in Asian Championship, Busan. Mm-hmm. So in, in, uh, that was team match, I guess. Quarterfinal. India against China. So first, first match I played, uh, I think Sarath Bhai played with Zhuzin. Or I played with uh, Malong first match, something like that. I don't remember. I think I played with Malong first time. No chance. 11-1, 11-3, and then 11-1 or 11-2. No chance. After that, I realized that Malong had problem with me in, Par- in that World Championship Paris. That he was very much nervous. And he was missing. He was not that confident. But in Asian Championship, I had no chance at all. He killed me. So, after that, I understood that big tournaments and you need some time to also set into the tournament, you know. You have to set with with the atmosphere, how the things are going there, how the tables are behaving. You have to learn. I mean, when you go to go for big tournament, you go like few days before to set the atmosphere like that. Mm. So that was a like funny story. So <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting because I think a lot of people when they are when you are playing national tournaments, I think they go through the same feeling that you know when they see the draw, and then they see that they have to play you, and yeah. uh, they, then they probably the same situation is going on with them. And somebody calls them and says that, oh, if you win the if you win your first round, then you'll win the entire national championship. And then whom do you have to play? And then then they see that you have to play Somijit Ghosh. So. <laughs> it's a, it's very interesting. I want to know, uh, since you mentioned, uh, you know, you had these very close games with, uh, you know, such, you know, the world champion. So, I want to know, at that uh, nine-all stage, when you are playing against, like, really top players, I mean, people who are certainly better than you, and, you know, there are many players out there who might be playing against you, knowing that your game is far better. What are some tips that you would give to people, you know, in those crucial stages? What, what, is, what is some advice you can give to improve performance? See, at that time, I think 9 or 8 all, you should follow your instincts. Mm-hmm. There is uh, not such uh, advice. You cannot give any such advice at that time. You have to follow tactics. You have to, you have to think and learn that how did you make that eight or nine points in, in that game? Mm. Basically, you have to follow that. And of course, to show, show your opponent that you are confident. If you show that you are confident, you are here to win, then you, you have done your 50%, I think, already. Mm. So this body language is very, very important. The more you go far, the more these things will be much more uh, important for you. Because when you play against good player, so you will get very few chances, very few opportunity, which you have to grab. If you don't grab that opportunity, you will lose that opportunity. 
when they are nervous many occasion they are they are sometimes they go shaky they are nervous something like that mm. so very important to uh, to be uh, confident and believe in your system believe mm. in your game that i can beat anyone in the world so when i used to practice uh, under peter peter carlson world champion he used to uh, say that practice uh, with which stroke you can beat the world champions or you can challenge them in this uh, with these strokes to challenge the top players so very important for you to practice those shots i think so mm-hmm. you will you will improve yourself and every day there is opportunity to improve yourself as a human being as a table tennis player also so you have to practice accordingly and you have to train your mind also you when you are going for uh, going uh, with like everyone has a good or bad day when you are, when you went to practice you cannot play good you cannot put the ball on the table many times happened to me many times happened to all champions also i i know this i had this kind of feeling but their mental pressure and mental opportunity training opportunity is coming like whenever you have this kind of doubt things are coming into yourself then you have to believe in yourself and then you have to speak to yourself you should have self talk you should tell your mind that yeah this is the best opportunity best mental training which i can get the day i am bad if i can survive when i am good then i will win i will have very smooth journey then but that the day you are bad you have uh, less confident you are missing many balls you are missing easy balls then you have to tell yourself that yeah there is a chance now that i have to put 100% i have to learn mental skill i have to learn learn how to be confident so i think these things those who are successful though those who have achieved really high they they are doing this i think this is the way to train your mind train your uh, uh, body like this i think so mm. it's very important whenever you feel challenges you have to uh, you have to you know uh, you have to change this into opportunity mm. so uh, my uh, my coach used to say peter peter carlson my former coach he used to say that i have i have been champions and i i have learned a lot i have been a champion because i have been around the champions around many many champions so that's why i could win many tournaments many championship and i would say that uh, i won many championship and i have been champion because of this man i mean he helped me a lot peter carlson he helped me a lot mentally he changed my thought process and everything so th- these things i still believe a lot and i have one good thing that i think mm, everyone who, those who are successful and those who achieve something they have some belief system i mm-hmm. have i think uh, quite high belief system um, for myself yeah i do i do get also negative sometimes mm-hmm. and nature but yeah, of course you have to come back as soon as possible you have to mm-hmm. be positive you have to turn around when you are negative yeah you have to Uh, try to avoid that part you have to change you have to swing and you have to turn into it to positive this is mm. the thing you have to uh, you have to do i think very very interesting perspective that you've given us on just the importance of mental training visualization seeing yourself winning seeing yourself competing and then giving your best effort so i think all of this transformation that has made you the player that you are i think a lot of people have to put in that effort necessary that whenever they are faced with any challenges and then they have to really go about in their mind they have to transform that into an opportunity because many people they allow their fear to consume them they 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 allow that fear to take over and when that happens you basically lost the match you've uh, you've surrendered that chance 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the main thing is like the mental part. You feel much more important in in every prospect, also in life, also on court. The similar thing like. Uh, the more you grow up the more competition you have like m- the more you compete you feel much more mental stress much more mentally you are giving 100% and uh, so there you have to train your mind very well i think mm. and for you to train your mind see it's not that easy like physical training is quite vis- visible like you can just work out build your muscle something but for mental training you have to face some problem you have to face some challenge mm-hmm. then you will get opportunity to you know learn you have to you have to go through that mm-hmm. and your first thing i think is this positivity like in our world this positive things are really important i spoke to peter and i learn one thing like when you uh, when you are going to one tournament when you go uh, any tournament or when you uh, stay with someone try to stay with people those who have match or those who are winning if you stay with uh, people those who lost the matches lost the tournament then you feel sometimes that the negative vibe is coming mm. so i felt also many times but yeah when i feel like yeah some negative vibe is coming in uh, when i'm in the tournament or something is coming then i used to avoid or i used to you know stay with myself because when you have anything to deliver most important thing is to stay positive when you have to perform you have to be positive you have to believe and without that there is no not possible i think to deliver really good mm-hmm. i think you have to believe and you have to be positive there is only one option mm-hmm. these things are compulsory and you have to be like this also when you are playing 9988 you have to think like that positive and things to control as much as possible like i can tell you one uh, tactical thing people uh, many times when they are making 99 they wanted to make long service as a surprise mm-hmm. and then wanted to block which is passive game i used to say we you we all used to say block is like passive but yeah few people they have fantastic block games but uh, in table tennis i think those who are champions those who have been really good in in this game they have been really attacker and they have been not not chopper but they have been attacker and when you were giving long or making a passive block then you were thinking negative i think you were rely on opponent then he will miss or she will miss so i think it's a better to think for yourself when it's 9988 do first you have to learn how how you won that eight or nine points in the game Eight, eight, nine, nine. Yeah, if I'm sure that he knows that hundred percent, I I'm going to do that. Then yeah, you can surprise him. For me, the young players should understand this kind of thing. Then, when they're playing with strong player, good player, better player, they they have experience. They have been uh, they have been trained. So when you have to beat them, you have to be you you have to be like very much precise. what what you are doing very much uh, aggressive with your tactic and you have to be positive then only you have a very high chance to win against better player i, I believe mm-hmm. yeah it's really interesting uh, you know i just wanted to uh, ask you on that note uh whenever we are faced with any challenge and we ended up, we end up failing what is your advice how do we overcome failure how do we overcome challenges that are that it seems impossible to overcome what's your advice for overcoming any challenges see first you have to think what you did you have to analyze honestly if you did any mistake if you did any anything happened wrong anything went wrong then yeah you have to correct that if there, there is may 
there is uh, there is many time that uh, that i was uh, not wrong i went for that but didn't happen then i lost but in that case i think you have to keep up the positive thing with you you have to believe in your system then you have to go on but if you see that uh, you had some mistake result came differently so for that you have when you play next time you have to change that i think you have to rectify that then you have to apply again so when anything is happening when you win your match or losing your match first you have to analyze and analyze honestly don't be biased or no don't be anything you have to honest to yourself because you have to help yourself first so in india many people uh, not everyone of course but few people they want to take shortcut they want to think for only for this match or tomorrow or something like that but for me yes of course you have to win today and tomorrow there is no option but you have to believe and you have to think for longer prospect also you cannot finish your career for today and tomorrow so you have to think like that i think you have to be little bit realistic also with yourself mhm so it's important to analyze honestly mhm uh, analyze your problem you have to know yourself what is your weak side weaker side what is your stronger side you have to you have to work both way you have to hide your weaker side as much as possible you you have to build your stronger side much more you have to show that stronger side as possible as much as possible mm. but i know few players like i can say zuzin if you know know mm. his name zuzin i know he has bad back end but when whenever i play with him i cannot make him play that back end because he has fantastic legs and he will turn and he will play his four and every time so people know your weak point but still they cannot touch this kind of weak, if you can have this kind of weak point then it's still okay mhm you cannot have any weaker part where people mm-hmm. can touch you if you let them touch that weaker part you will lose most of the time so there i think it's important that you have to learn Mm. you have to build your game in that way i think mhm and would you say the same applies in life also <laughs> yeah maybe maybe <laughs> it can be like that <laughs> so next yeah. i wanted to ask you uh, it's really interesting all the things that you're sharing uh, each successful person they have different success habits they are doing certain things that allow them to become successful would you say that there are some success habits and if there are in your life some things that you do which allow you to maintain that consistency and ensure that you are successful can you just share a few of those habits so that we can learn and what what, how, what advice do you have for us to develop success habits of our own i think this discipline mm-hmm. for a sports person is very important discipline and then time management mm-hmm. which is really important then you have to precise with your particulars like uh, how you are preparing for your matches mm-hmm. how you are putting your a- a- efforts uh, mm-hmm. how much you are giving so this thing you have to be uh, how uh, how good you are tactically so this thing you have to follow and you have to be disciplined and on court also like many players i saw especially uh special uh, especially young players from europe young players from latin america they are uh, like um, not so much uh, discipline like mm-hmm. i mean discipline means not to the tactically they are not discipline like they are winning with one tactic but they wanted to challenge himself or then they lost the way so- something happened so for me is like one thing is discipline the tactically you have to go really good you have to listen to your coach or somebody who is ad- advising you from behind you have to listen that you have to follow that yeah when it's not working then you can change maybe but when somebody is saying you have to follow that so you have to believe when some someone is behind you 
or you have to believe in your coach or you have to your co you have to believe in your coaching system so these things you have to learn you have to learn and you have to experience this thing i think very important to uh, to grow uh, grow that you have to trust someone you have to blindly trust from someone to, for for the advice which you can take mm -hmm. so when you are playing under somebody if you don't trust that person then it's very difficult for you to you know learn and for him also so uh, to grow i think to grow in your career you have to trust someone especially your coach or someone who is advising you mm -hmm. that's a very interesting perspective and i think whenever you are talking to a coach or you are talking to a better player you're to you're talking to someone who is inspiring you and you can actually make you better you can learn from them i think it's very important like you said to surrender to the learning process but only when you trust them yes exactly hmm. you have to trust you have to trust them and you have to talk to them you have to clear your thoughts you have to if you have any doubt clear with them mm -hmm. you have to believe in that system mm -hmm. the coaching system you cannot uh, change again and again then i think at the end you will not learn anything mm -hmm. i think these days players should understand this there is no shortcut to be to become successful to win a tournament you have to process there is a process you have to follow that process there is no alternative way i think you have to practice twice a daily you have to you have to go through a uh, fitness training you have to there is many you know this process which you have to follow there is no other alternative so that's why i just i wanted to uh, say to many young players that education is very important education it's not about like study i'm not saying about education like that with life also there is a lot of education with life you learn a lot of things without studying also like like a life education kind of thing yeah life education like life education life education is also i think important important to know the reality mm -hmm. like books i think is little bit like theory but in the you have to come to the practical life also you have to face the practical challenges mm. you have to understand the problem you have to find the solution i think for that mm. so life education is uh, life education is also very important i think for mm. everyone i had this kind of uh, I, i was very uh, very lucky and uh, i had very very much uh, opportunity to play around world champions stay around world champions so i could learn a lot of good things from them live education i think which is uh, very important also mm -hmm. okay i see that uh, this is very important to be around champions in order to become one you have to be around them if there is going to be any hope now i just wanted to understand outside of the tt hall outside of your training what do you do for your own personal growth and how does that contribute to your game is there anything that you do out of the you know outside your fitness outside your uh, outside your table tennis training is there anything that you do that allows you to grow as a person nothing some nothing like that i have few friends mm -hmm. with whom i talk nothing with uh, table tennis i mean if i'm winning or losing nothing happened with that relationship if i have a friend yeah the, the mother i mean there is uh, no way that if i am losing there then i will not talk if i am winning nothing i mean quite balance but yeah for players it's important to you know for your emotion you have to have balance like before when i was young i had very much high, uh, very much uh, emotions like if i am winning i'm flying yeah i'm everywhere i'm talking to everyone but if i'm losing i don't speak to anyone But this kind of thing i think difficult because if you are winning still you have to move on next day when you wake up you have to work when you losing still you have a same day so my coach used to say you have to change change these things and you have to learn 
you have to control your emotion so for, for me uh, yeah when i was 17 18 i, I have learned it like when i played i if if i won i was very happy yeah for you is normal to be happy stay happy and then but next day morning go for practice wake up uh, work hard but when you lose same you go you just you you will be upset you will be you know you will feel depression this is normal you will be unhappy but yeah still you learn from from that something you can still learn something from that and then you just move on and then next day you you try those things and apply and then move on for next tournament like that so for me i would suggest to young players that control your emotion which mm-hmm. is very important if you are winning the next day will be same if you are losing the next day will be same also so there if you are uh, if if you don't control your emotion if you if you uh, if you just stay with them if you are winning you are not practicing you are losing then still you are not practicing so then in that process you will lose lot of time and time is very precise for us time is like priceless you cannot very difficult to you know buy time or uh, you once the time is gone then is gone you cannot you mm. know change again so you can use them again so that's why very important to uh, to you know use your time that's mm-hmm. why you have to control your emotion which is very important i think mm-hmm. i just wanted to know who are the people that uh, contribute you know who form your support system and uh, how uh, who are the people that have, some people that that have supported you on your journey because it's been a long road to reach where you have reached i just wanted to understand the importance of support from your point of view when whenever you're trying to achieve something of a dream for most people it is a dream to play on the in the olympics what role does support play there and so who are some of the people who have supported you on your journey i think first my parents and mm-hmm. my family they have supported me a lot from beginning from the childhood and they won they never stopped me for playing table tennis they helped me a lot mm-hmm. in every every stage from since childhood so it was really a uh, great uh, thing for me to get so much support from my family my parents so it's uh, uh, i'll be always grateful to them for that and yeah of course my few friends those who supported me when i wa- when i won i i wanted to share thoughts with them when i lost i wanted to share also a few things so yeah my friends my family they have been really uh, strong pillar to my to to this journey yeah my coach had big role to educate me mr peter carlson he helped me a lot so yeah of course then federation also helped me a lot table tennis federation since i was talented i was performing they allow me to went to sweden they allow me to went to abroad and play um, yeah they when you uh, when you became good player any people has a big role in your you know you know career they all had to support you uh, otherwise it's very difficult to become good player you are achieving something but your hard work is there if you are hard working if you are performing then this kind of system will uh, grow also automatically i know so first i think this hard work and and you should have dream to achieve something mm-hmm. then everything will fall in line i think so mm. it's uh, important to have a dream important to have some uh, thought that you can achieve important to have believe that yes yes i can achieve i will do this mhm and i think a lot of times even if people don't initially support uh over a period of time as you start to achieve more and more people also start believing and then they want to start supporting i think uh, this is something that every player 
starts to experience slowly in their career once they start achieving initially they felt like oh it's me versus the world and now slowly over a period of time once you start winning once you start achieving people also start to see okay this person has potential this person can do a lot so then that exactly. support comes in exactly you are right you are right it's so true. I, true so i can definitely see that support has played a very important role with in most people's career i think it's uh, yeah. it we can't normal. deny that uh, you know like you said it's it's an individual sport but uh, at the end of the day there are so many people backing you that allow you to perform okay. at this level lot i mean especially to peace of mind and when you go to go on court you have nothing to fear you just have to win the match which you have to think so for that peace of mind you need that back support you know backing mm-hmm. backing your family like if you have fight with your parents family something then it's very difficult for you to play on court then you will not find that peace of mind so i think when you have this peace of mind it's really great thing i mean and mm-hmm. for that your parents and family got a lot of credit mhm okay you know i want to thank you first of all for sparing your time and doing this it's it's been a really great experience talking to you and learning from you as to really what it takes to become successful and reach a level like this because not many people get a chance to reach such a high level uh, when they are playing a game either like table tennis or playing any sport or they want to achieve a dream for themselves i think you've given us so much valuable information three things that i think really stood out for me one do the boring things do it on a regular basis and make sure that you keep doing it until you get the result and that all, the result is not always under your control sometimes the result is not in your hands but on occasion you will find that if you can take care of your effort you give it 100% every time the results will eventually come and lastly the most important thing for me i think that stood out from all of this is that you have to control yourself you have to control your emotions you have to you have you have to believe in yourself you have to fight through it all because at the end of the day life will throw so many challenges your way be it on the table or off the table and ultimately the person that you are the person that you, uh, you when you're faced with a challenge you have to turn that into an opportunity and give it 100% and then it will work go your way Yes, all right. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that for those of you listening that if you want to dive deeper into this you really want to crack the secrets of success you want to understand what it takes to overcome failures and really prepare yourself for success jump in on my next webinar and you'll learn the strategies on how you can do that. In the meantime I just want to say Swamiji Ghosh the Bengal tiger thank you so much bro. we have learned thank so much you, from you thank and you. and it's been a lovely lot. conversation I learned yeah, so much time. and i think this is not only going to impact a lot of people with regard to their game on the table but also it's going to impact them throughout their life so thank you so much for being here thank you man thank you it's yeah. a lot yeah i just want to say that you know if you're looking for more amazing in-depth conversations interviews like this with the best of the best where we learn and we dive deep into understanding what it really takes to become successful then stay tuned for the next episode of vikram's incredible 1000 the success podcast this is somijit ghosh and me vikram signing off and we'll see you next time <laughs>